Good morning. Welcome to Christchurch. Hi, John. How's your week been? Uh, it's been great. A really big welcome to you, whether you're joining us online or here in person. Uh, but it's been a good week in the sense in which I got a sore arm because I got jabbed for the first time this week. So you can now work out my age as well if you really want to. I did too. <laughs> yeah, well, it's great, isn't it? That it gives us that kind of bit of protection and a bit of awareness. But also today, when we look at the service, we're going to be having a look at the hope that Jesus himself brings. That certainty and that security that is far more than just about a vaccine, that is actually about eternal life. But Heath, what's been some of your highlights this week? Well, I also got stabbed, um, but I went on, I, was, I did a coaching course this week, so that was really exciting. And my life group have started the prayer course as well. So lots of courses, lots of good things going on, lots of learning. Brilliant. Well, today, God just wants to totally encounter us wherever we are. So whether you're at home or here in person, I just invite you, why don't you just open your hands for a moment as a sign of openness to him. Let's just prepare our hearts and minds. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your presence here with us. We thank you that wherever we are, we can connect with you. Would you just reveal more of your heart to us this day? Would you open our eyes to see you and our ears to hear? Would you enable us to fall deeper in love with you? And so, Lord Jesus, whether we're at home able to sing or whether we're here just listening, will you just connect with us and help us to worship you this morning in heart, mind, body, and soul. In your name. Amen. Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great. Break 
Gosh, for those of us in church, it's hard not singing, isn't it? I hope those at home have sung with gusto and maybe even danced with the freedom, as the song said. It's a great time for us to reflect on the words that we sing. The words that jumped out at me this morning were, you have been faithful through every storm. How has God been faithful to you in this COVID storm? Let's pray. O oh God, whose will it is that we should be one in Christ, thank you that you have been faithful and are faithful in every storm. We pray for unity. Pardon our pride and lack of faith, which are the cause of so many divisions. Deliver us from our narrow-mindedness, bitterness and our prejudice. Save us from considering as normal that which is scandal to the world and offence to your love. Teach us to recognise the gifts of your grace and the beautiful multicultural intergenerational family that we are. We are sorry when we have not been the family you would have us be. Amen.
And Lord Jesus, as we stand before you, as we recognize your amazing love for us, as we're in awe of all you've done, all your forgiveness for, the life that you've brought us, may you now just speak to us again through your word as it is both read and then explored in a few moments. Speak to us afresh about our security and our strength in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. The, pa the passage today is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. I wonder, have many of you enjoyed either playing with or watching others build from Lego? It's something that we can easily do and see come together. And you can put small and big pieces together. I want you to have that image in your mind as we explore this passage today. That way of things being put together to make something bigger and different and more beautiful. But I also want you to have another image. Some of you, maybe in previous years, have been on holiday. And I know not many of us have already been able to be on holiday recently. But in previous years, you might have been on holiday to like the Lake District or the Peak District or the Scottish Borders. And as you go walking, you're often walking along a wall. And those walls are dry stone walls. They're put together stone by stone by stone. And as you see people building them, you see them with piles of stones selecting exactly the right stone to place to make sure it holds together and doesn't fall down. Well, I wonder if you were walking along one day and you saw a pile of stones that had just been left as rubble, almost just thrown out. They weren't being used. They didn't think they were right for this wall. And on this particular day, as someone was coming along, they went looking through that pile of discarded stones. That discarded stones that nobody else would have anything to do with. And in those stones, they saw one that was beautiful. One that was precious. And one that was just perfect for rebuilding a brand new wall. You see, that's the image that's behind this part of 1 Peter. Jesus had come to earth. Jesus had come for the people of God to be built upon, to be built around, to be the center. But he'd been rejected. He'd been thrown away. He'd been killed. And he'd not been seen for what he was. But to God... As God looked and saw his son, he said, you, you are precious. I've chosen you. You are beautiful. You are the foundation upon which I'm going to build my church. You are the foundation upon which I'm going to build. For you follow me and you honor me and you put me first. And so God looked at a whole pile of rubble. And a whole pile that had been discarded that we thought had nothing good in it. And God saw Jesus and he started to build. You see, we would rather have had Jesus killed. But Jesus rose from the dead. And Jesus is alive, seated at the right hand of the Father. There's a constancy. There's a consistency. He didn't look much but to God, he was chosen, precious, 
But more than that, he's a living stone. I don't know when you hear that kind of phrase, whether you think, hey, look, there's a block of stone there and there's a little hand waving out the corner. Or maybe you think there's a block of stone and an eye winking back at you. It's kind of strange language at one level. But what it's saying is it's not something that's dead. It's not something that's inanimate as a big, solid, unmovable thing. It has that image of being solid, unshakable. But that image of being alive. As I said, something not dead, Jesus is alive. And he's alive today. And he's with us by his spirit. So it's a living stone. Something that is solid and unstoppable. Something that will always be there. But something that's alive, not dead. Something that's breathing. Something that's bringing life to everything. You know, what's more is Peter then goes on. He goes, that this living stone of Jesus, other living stones are going to be built upon. Other living stones are going to be shaped upon. Other living stones are going to come and connect. And I want you to take that idea again of God sifting through a pile of discarded stones And as he goes through, he sees this one. And this one, he says, you're chosen and you're precious. There's something special about you. And he places it into his building. The dry stone waller places it into the wall. The Lego builder places it into the model. And you this morning might be feeling, hey, I'm just one of those stones that's just in that pile of rubble being discarded. I thought there was nothing left. And God is sifting through those stones going, you, whether you're at home watching, whether you're sitting here, you are precious. You are chosen. You are special to me. I want you to be part of my building." my new building that will last. I want you to know something solid and to have life again. I want you to be part of something that is bigger, bigger than yourself, something that will last for all time. Built together. Just think about it. Living stones built together. Think about it. You being chosen and precious. You know, again, it can be sometimes a bit hard thinking of ourselves as stones. And so I want you to think about it maybe in a slightly different way. Maybe think about it as a rugby scrum coming together of a group of people binding together and pushing, being held together. Or maybe you've watched uh, an eight crew in rowing and you see their time just exactly hits each moment. Time and time again, it's as if they're moving as one. Or maybe you've watched an Olympic opening ceremony or a human pyramid, and it's as if the people are held together with one another, moving as if they're one. Whether they're decorated as a castle or as a a dragon or an animal, whatever. That sense of moving together, of living, of being built together. There's an image here of a spiritual house, of a temple being built together that is living. You see, when we look back in the Old Testament, we see that there was a temple, a place where people would come to worship God, where it was built together, where God's presence would dwell. But actually here, it's about God's people being built together where God's presence would dwell. It talks about worship and about putting God first. It talks about that offering of ourselves, of worship, that offering of connection, that offering of encounter with God. I want you to remember just back to Good Friday, when we did the readings here, we were reminded that in the temple, the curtain was torn from top to bottom. No longer was God's presence somewhere different that we had to spend time waiting and connecting to. God's presence was with us 
for all of us. And that's what Peter is talking about, being built together for God's spirit, God's presence to dwell with us. That presence, that spirit of God strengthening and holding us. And our worship is as we offer our lives, our lives as spiritual sacrifices through Jesus, Peter talks about. Through Jesus. Because of Jesus' resurrection, because of his death, we all have access to God. We can come to him now. And we can keep on being built together. You know, God wants us to be able to be a people that receive his blessing, why to be a blessing? To offer ourselves our time, our talents, in response to what God has done. In response to his love, not because he needs it, but because it enables us to live the best way for him. Because it enables us to flourish and be built together. It enables us, as the scripture says here, to never be put to shame. The Old Testament talks about it being so simple. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. It's as we're built together. It's how the Holy Spirit dwells and moves through us. Verse 6 continues. It talks about Jesus being laid as a foundation stone. It's something for us to be built upon, to be built secure. I wonder if you went outside and started jumping up and down on the ground, you wouldn't expect it to suddenly cave away. Jesus himself told the parable about it. He told the parable of the man who built the house upon the rock. So that when the wind and the waves came, the house did not disappear. It was not washed away. It was secure and solid. Jesus reminded people that it was his words. It was who he was. And here Peter is reminding us that as we are being built together on that foundation stone. But not only is it the foundation stone, it's also the cornerstone. And rather than me go into a great big lesson about this is what a cornerstone does, the simple thing to say is the cornerstone was the stone that was first placed, that all other stones got their orientation and measurements from. As all other stones had that orientation and measurement, so that they were built together in the way that they were intended to be, taking direction from. Just think again to that Lego illustration where you have that one piece that you start with and you wonder what it's going to become and you follow the instructions and you see it come together in a new way. Just think about it as that dry stone wall where one stone was placed first and now the walls run for miles over some of the steepest slopes in the country where they've stood for years and for decades. How are you being shaped and placed into that wall and into that building? For here, Peter says, whenever we trust God, whenever we're shaped and built together, actually we'll never be put to shame. Because it's not just for now. It's for all eternity. You see, God has a plan to transform this world through his people. Have you ever had that frustration where you're building a model and you've lost a piece? Anybody done any jigsaws even during lockdown? And you get it out and you start putting it together and there's the piece that is missing. It's just not quite complete. It's not that you can't see it, but it's not quite complete. But that's the point here. God has a plan to transform the world through his people being built together. And that includes you, chosen and precious, being shaped and fitted into his wall, into his building, into his living stones, into his model. For when we're built together, when we offer ourselves to God, he fills us with his spirit. 
and he blesses the world through us. But because, as we started, Jesus had died and rose again and is seated with God in heaven, we're not just being built together with him now. We're being built together with him for all eternity. Something that will last beyond this time. You are chosen and precious. Jesus was chosen and precious. You being chosen and precious, God wants to place you into his building of his people. That as we daily choose to offer our lives to him, he wants to fill us with his spirit. And he wants to work in and through us. And he wants us to know that when we are chosen and placed in him, there is nothing that will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That we're secure not just now, but for all eternity. It's part of God's plan to bless and transform the world. And because of Jesus, we are secure both now and into the future. So let's just pray for a moment. I want to invite you just where you are. I wonder what difference it makes to you knowing that you are chosen and precious by God. And it might be that during this time or something else has happened to you that you feel you're one of those people that's just been left on the rubbish heap somewhere. But actually you're on the pile that wasn't going to be placed or used and as you're just seated there at home or here believe what God is wanting to do is just to say I see you I know you I love you you are chosen and precious to me and God wants to restore you into his building and so Lord Jesus by your spirit Will you just come and minister that grace and that hope? For others of you, there's some uncertainty in the future and around at the moment. I just pray the Lord will strengthen you. Allow his spirit to minister to you. That you might be strong in him. And that he might give you the strength to face whatever it is in the days to come. And for some of you, there is something that God is wanting to bless in and through you as you just gently offer yourself day by day. And so, Holy Spirit, will you just bring your blessing? And into this space, we're going to continue to worship, whether you're here just being able to rest and listen, whether you're at home able to sing out loud. Let's all just join with God as he ministers to us, as we continue in worship now this morning.
the song we've just been reflecting, we said, This is my friend in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. Let's spend some time now praying to Jesus. The disciples asked Jesus very simply, teach us to pray. Let's spend some time with him now, having a chat with our friend Jesus. The cross at the top of our church is draped in grave clothes. Those grave clothes that fell on the floor are the clothes that Jesus showed his love for us. I had a picture as I was reflecting on the cross of blankets at the foot of the cross for us to take and wrap round ourselves. And as we pray today, may we imagine ourselves wrapping that blanket round us and feeling the warmth and comfort of Jesus. As we've learned today, we are precious to him. Our prayers are taken from Lectio 365, a great daily morning and evening prayer app. As we continue on this socially distanced world, teach us to learn how to show love for each other in new and different ways. Teach me to love you with all my heart, mind, body, and strength. Help me to imitate and include you as I plan my diary, write my to-do list, waste time on my phone, and walk through my neighborhood. Holy Spirit, revive us today Inspire politicians and educators, artists and journalists, economists and scientists, doing church today with all kinds of ideas that can make the world a place for good. As we pray these big prayers, we earth them in our local community thinking of GSK, as well as students, educators, and parents as they disciple their own children. We pray for our queen as she mourns the death of her husband, and we pray for all those mourning the loss of loved ones. Thank you for the different ways we have learned to communicate recently. We praise you that our church has continued its services and for all those in the background working at the computers as this service is delivered. We pray for those churches who are having difficulty in doing this and pray that new ways to communicate your love in our communities may continue to be worked on. Thank you for emails, Zoom, phone calls and even old-fashioned cards and letters that we have both been given and received. Thank you that we have been able to move and enjoy your creation as we've walked with friends. We pray for those who have difficulty getting out and about. We pray for each one of us as we battle the difficulties of the ongoing restrictions. Thank you that so many people have received their vaccinations. Keep each one of us sensible in what we should and shouldn't do. We pray for our young people. As many schools have returned this week for the summer term, we pray for those who've had exams cancelled and yet are still having assessments and tests. May they know, they know your peace and patience at this time. As our reading said, we are precious to him. Let's use that prayer that Jesus taught us and pray together now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I guess uh, it wouldn't totally be a service, whether online or in person, without us having just a couple of notices. And uh, just to let you know, the the Children's and Youth Work has restarted in person here as well. So if you're at home watching online, you'd like to be able to join in, you can book uh, through Eventbrite, register, same way as you register for a service, uh, and you're more than welcome. And uh, other details are also available from the church office as well. But also, we recognize that this time has been hard for many different people, and for some new mums, it's been particularly hard. And so I'm delighted to let you know that our baby group just started again this last week. Uh, It's run by a new team on Fridays. Uh, If you want to be able to have a place, the details are on your screens as well. But we'd love you to be able to join in. If you're in need in any way, uh, we've been helping a few people through the church office this week and with phone calls and with prayers. And it's been lovely to receive some of your requests for prayer as well. So if you would like to be able to send in any requests for prayer or something else you'd like us to be helping you with, please do uh, just contact us uh, at the office as well. Well, we're going to continue in worship now. And uh, if you're in the building, I'm just going to invite you just to stand, because otherwise you've been sitting a little time. And uh, I'm going to invite you just to stand as we listen to this last song. And if you're at home, I'd love you just to join in as well. So let's uh, come to God in worship. Maybe just think about how you're standing if you're here. Maybe to lean into God's presence. Feel free to worship yourself in engagement. May this day bring Sabbath rest to our hearts and our homes. May God's image in us be restored and our imaginations in God be restoried. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time 
slowed down. May we know grace to embrace our own smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed us and his spirit lead us in the week and the life to come. Amen.
Thank mm -hmm. you. 